Hey, no, I have an older brother. His name's Alan Collins, and he goes to Sanford University. And so when he was applying for Sanford University four years ago, he had a prompt for his application that was an essay. And the prompt was, what is the most irresponsible thing you have ever seen someone do? And he knew exactly what to write about because, as he said, he's related to me. <laughs> and that doesn't really hurt my feelings because I'm like so much better than him in every single way. And I went to military school. Nothing irresponsible ever happens at military school. <laughs> and, but what hurt my feelings is that Sanford accepted him and gave him a scholarship for it. And I don't think what I did was all that irresponsible, but clearly it was worth at least $5,000 worth of irresponsibility. So you might be thinking, why would a school pay someone $5,000 to go because of something irresponsible their little brother did? And I don't think it was all that irresponsible. I think I was totally in the, in the right in, in what I did. So it was a pretty long time ago. Me and my family used to go to South Carolina, <coughs> Fripp Island, if you guys have ever been on Thanksgiving. And we had a tradition where the guys would all get on a golf cart and go on a joyride at midnight, right? So we're off to a great start. And my uncle and my dad were under the influence of alcohol, potentially. They were drinking fireball whiskey. And so the reason why I was driving was because I was not under the influence of alcohol, because I was allergic to fireball whiskey, because it's made with cinnamon. And then I was also nine years old. But <laughs> still, they're making the responsible decision of putting a sober driver at the wheel despite the fact that the wheel has a printed message on it that says, if you are not 16, you should not be driving this vehicle. <laughs> so, we go on a joyride at about midnight, and it's a, a cold fall night, and we're driving around, and we're trying to find our way to the golf course. So we're going on a, a really dark road. There's barely any lights around. We're only able to go off of our headlights. And the thing you have to understand uh, when you're going on a midnight ride, with no lights around except for the headlights on your golf cart, is that whenever you're going over a hill, you only see the front of the hill. So therefore, you can't see what's on the other side of the hill, so you can't tell whether it's a cliff or just more ground. <coughs> that being said, I was told to take a left because that's where the golf course was going to be. And so I take a left and there's a little hill going up. And so I'm thinking, all right, there's gonna be a golf course on the other side of this hill. And as I'm driving up the hill, we notice that the other side is kind of shimmering a little. And so my uncle screams, stop the car, or stop the cart. And so I had slammed my brakes on the car right before we hit the edge of this little cliff. And then we roll down right into <laughs> a, a lake. And so we have this, this golf cart in a pond and everyone's freaking out. We, we know it's infested with alligators, but we, our main concern is the golf cart. So we're trying to pull it out and it's impossible to pull out because it's like pulling out a huge bucket of water essentially because water's filling in and it's also stuck in mud. So they sent me and my brother to go door to door in the nearby neighborhood to try and get some help. And we got some people to come and help us. And it was just this really nice couple who had like a Mercedes, they were super rich. And they gave our, soaking wet clothes uh, a ride home and on the way there my uncle who gave me the direction to go left gave them the wrong directions so i, I kind of feel like it was more his fault than mine and so by the time we get home our parents had heard all the uh all the phone calls <coughs> saying what's going on uh we we crashed the golf cart we need help because they were too distracted to answer, but when, as soon as we walked in that door, it was a walk of shame. Because every single family member that was there was like <coughs> in two single file lines, just staring us down. And we had to explain everything. And so we had a pickup truck, and we go, we, my dad and my uncle go to get the golf cart out from the lake. And while they're there, the police show up. And I'm still at home, I'm like crying to my mom because I was nine years old. And I go, mom, what do I do if the police ask me if I was driving the car? That's gonna get us in trouble. That's gonna be a, a huge fine. 
And she says, well, honey, if the police show up and they ask you, you have to tell them the truth. And I, I, I kind of live by that now, especially with this honor code. So when my parent, uh, my dad and my uncle come back with the, the golf cart in tow and the police are following them with their lights on, my mom immediately goes, go to bed, go to bed. Because <laughs> <laughs> no need to tell the truth if you're not there to tell the truth, right? And so the police were more amused than they were angry and we didn't get fined or anything. The golf cart was actually totally fine. And there was like very minimal water damage. So nonetheless, I could still hold it over my brother's head that I'm the reason he's in college right now because he wrote about me. Right? So how irresponsible is it that I crashed a golf cart if the end result is my brother getting a higher education? 